Welcome to Daz Geek. We are about to explore Ubuntu 22.10. Now, why am I so excited about this video and exploring 22.10 with you? Well, it's simple. This was my first love. Ubuntu is a lot of people's first love. But over the years and through some changes, I've not been able to utilize Ubuntu on my production machine for a very long time. The mini beast that I've built on this channel really wasn't able to work with Ubuntu for a couple of reasons that I'll get into one of those later, but one of them is resolved with this release and that is a big deal and that was Pipewire. Now Pipewire allows me to do some really intricate things with audio, allows me to pipe in a bunch of different sources when we're doing the Destination Linux podcast, which you need to be listening to and subscribe to if you're not. It's a podcast that I'm on, Jill's on, Michael's on, absolutely amazing, part of the Tux Digital Network. So go check that out. But we do some really fancy things with our audio to bring in our patrons and other things live. And Pipewire is the reason I can do that. And Ubuntu hasn't had Pipewire. And so I've been on Fedora and I absolutely adore Fedora. So if you're still on Fedora, keep enjoying it. If you love Arch, keep enjoying it. But this time, this moment is for the Ubuntu people out there or those considering utilizing Ubuntu as their first distro, as many of us in the Linux community have. So we're gonna get into it. We're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's not a whole lot of ugly here, so mostly the good. And whether you should, if you're on the fence, choose Ubuntu as the first distribution, or maybe your 55th distribution, because you know once you get into Linux, you get into that distro hopping thing. It's a thing, let's get into it. So the first thing we have to talk about is one of the greatest features, in my opinion, of Ubuntu, and that is the installation process. Nobody, and I mean nobody, fight me in the comments, does it better than Ubuntu. Ubuntu's installer is the simplest, easiest to use installer, always has been, and that's one of the main reasons why so many new people flock to it. But again, the installation process is beautiful, it flows, it's simple, it makes sense, and it's one of the standout features of Ubuntu. So I just wanna take a moment as we begin our exploration into GNOME desktop in Ubuntu, or they call Ubuntu proper, which is their core operating system of Ubuntu that comes with GNOME as default, as the desktop environment, that whoever did the wallpapers here, absolutely mwah, beautiful, beautiful job. These wallpapers are just absolutely gorgeous. If you wanna change your wallpaper, by the way, really, really simple, change background, boom, and then you've got all of these gorgeous options. And when I say gorgeous, I mean, the artist here just did an absolutely fantastic job all the way around, whether it was the photography, but this art, I mean, come on. Normally, I'll have Batman or Star Trek or something like that here, but this art is just so beautiful. I've had no option but to completely leave it as default. Speaking of which, making some custom changes here, like making dark theme by default or changing some of the color accents and things is very simple here, right in your appearance, but you can get to it right from this menu, which I absolutely love. And of course, GNOME has some additional new options in this version of the desktop, GNOME 43 which include audio switchers and quick access options, which is really nice. And I really appreciate that the Ubuntu team put an app indicator tray. The GNOME team needs to make this kind of a permanent thing, but thankfully the Ubuntu team realizes what a poor user experience and puts the app tray there for you so you can see applications that are running in the background, which is pretty awesome. Now, one of the first things you may want to do is see what applications are installed by default in your new distro there. And Ubuntu makes that really nice with their launcher, their custom launcher on top of GNOME. You can go up into the corner, click on that, and you're gonna see your workspaces here. You can see I have three workspaces where I can drag and drop applications to, or I can see applications that are open within those workspaces. One of the things I would love to see the GNOME team change is that if you have applications open on your second monitor, not your first monitor, it'll show that there's nothing actually open on your screen, which is kind of misleading. Whereas if you have it open on your first or primary monitor, you have those applications there. It'll kind of give you a preview of those applications. So something for them to add into additional features to make it even better. And then down below, 
you can see I can scroll through. I've got these dots here I could click on. I can use my scroll wheel and I can scroll through all the various applications that I have installed, which is just an awesome, very easy. I, I think GNOME has the best menu system and best productivity system out of any of the desktop environments by default out of the box. Now, if you want to talk about i3WM and some of these other things and the cool stuff you could do with them, absolutely, I'm on board. I get it. But out of the box, GNOME just has a really, really solid experience. Now, the panel being on the left is not for everybody. I'm not a big fan of having my panel on the left. Thankfully, you could do some changes there. Now, I can also hit my super key and I could just type here launcher. And it's going to take me into the Ubuntu desktop options here. And I have the option to auto hide the dock if I want to go into panel mode, if I want it to be on the screen edges. And you can see when I uncheck that box there, I like that better, by the way, instead of taking up the entire real estate on the left side. But I also am an old Windows user. I come from Windows. So I want this whole launcher to be on the bottom. That's just what I'm used to. You do you though. And we move it to the bottom. Notice that the application launcher is all the way to the left. Now I call this out specifically for a reason. On Destination Linux, I mentioned that when I was doing this, that the launcher was all the way over to the right. And I made this huge kind of joke about having to drag my mouse all the way over to that launcher to click it. But since that episode aired, and I went to this installation, I did an update, and I don't think I manually did the configurations. It looks like they've changed it so it defaults where it should be over to the left. So I don't know, again, if you know, leave it in the comments below. But either way, I don't think I did anything on this machine to fix that, but it's fixed here. So otherwise, it's usually was on the right, and then you had to do some command line stuff to get it over to the left. And I'm talking about this thing here specifically, these dots, they would be all the way over here to the right. So again, I don't think I changed it, but maybe I did, I don't remember, let me know. But either way, I wish they had an option to let you move it where you wanted in here in the settings, but I like that you have some control over that dock behavior here. And you could do things like include the mountable drives, include network volumes if you want, or take those away and make that menu even cleaner. But again, out of the box, just beautiful. Just really, really well done and easy to configure and makes sense to get into the settings. And of course, you can get into all of those settings by just simply typing in settings. And then everything that we just talked about from the Ubuntu desktop to configuring your wireless, Bluetooth, all of that stuff is right here in one area. Again, very simple, very well done by the GNOME team and the enhancements the Ubuntu team has put on top of that to make it just flow really nicely. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do on your machine after you take a look around the desktop, maybe customize your wallpaper, look at some of the settings, you're gonna to wanna to install some software. So for that, really simple, we're gonna come down here to the Ubuntu software store. Once we open that up, you can see we have editor's choice here. So we have some kind of pre-curated software packages that we can install. And then under there, we have some categories. One of the things that makes Linux so awesome is not only does it have a much more secure permission system. So, you know, in Windows and you're downloading EXEs and it can do all kinds of things to your system and you don't know what's going on in the background. Things are a lot more curated in the open source world and you're downloading from repositories. And Ubuntu makes something called Snaps, which is a universal package. There's some people who are very advanced Linux users who have certain issues with snaps and that's fine. Don't get caught up in that. You're playing with Ubuntu, utilize what's there and easy for you to install, but just no snaps or universal package manager. And one of the cool things that they've done with snaps that I hadn't seen or been able to use, because again, I've been out of the Ubuntu world for a while and I'll open up GNOME boxes as an example here to kind of show you uh, there we go, GNOME boxes. Notice over here, we have this permissions option with the snaps. So I can control, kind of like you can do on your phones, all the various permissions of what this app should have access to. I can deny it permissions, I can add permissions. Now keep in mind, if the whole software package is for recording audio and you deny it the ability to record audio, the application isn't gonna work very well. But the fact is you get all of this control through that permissions and it's very easy to access in this really nice GUI here. And I appreciate the work that they've done with that. 
One of the issues that I've ran into with the software store is just the slowness in the categories. You can see here, I clicked entertainment and we're still waiting and waiting and waiting to the point where I actually thought this was broken on my machine. But eventually as I waited patiently and was searching for a solution online, it loaded. And I think just the connection to their server to kind of download it is really slow there. So just something to keep in mind. If you click on those categories, you see blanks, just wait a few moments for it to catch up. But as far as installing software, all the software that I've wanted to install has worked flawlessly. Uh, this includes Audacity, OBS, Steam, of course, to get our gaming on, all of these packages, Lutris that I have installed, and QWP Graph. Now, we're gonna talk about audio for a second. I'm obviously doing some very advanced audio options for our shows or podcasts and things like that. For you, you can just utilize, if you're just doing standard audio, listening to YouTube and stuff, none of this is really gonna be important to you. But I have a video showing you how to pipe audio, how simple it is in Linux, easier than any other OS, easier than Mac, easier than Windows, and I mean by a long shot. And you can't say that for everything with Linux, but I could definitely say that with Pro Audio when it comes to Linux, nobody is doing it better. And so one of the main powerful things that you can do is pipe audio between applications and applications like Jack used to be the option that we used in Linux, but they were way above most people's heads to be able to configure and get working. But Pipewire, now that's in Ubuntu, makes all of that super easy. The difference between Ubuntu's Pipewire and Fedora's though is Fedora has all of the Jack implementations built in. So any Jack application that you've used previously will work right out of the box. Whereas in Ubuntu's, they're still building that out. And right now you can't utilize a lot of the Jack applications without doing some configurations, installation settings, and those type of things. So you wanna use programs specifically made for Pipewire. So I bring that up to say, normally in Fedora, I use QJack CTL, even though that's a Jack specific tool to route all my audio, it creates a cool graph. Again, I have a video on it if you wanna see it. But here, QJack CTL would not work, and I had to use QWP Graph, which is built for Pipewire, but does essentially the exact same thing. You can see a visual here of mapping various audio sources into each other, mix minusing, and that type of stuff that you can do. So while it was a little confusing for me at first because I didn't realize they hadn't built in all the Jack tools, I was still able to find this tool thanks to a listener, actually, who when we covered QJack CTL, for the piping was like, why don't you use QWP graph because that works on pipe wire. And that was in my head weeks later when I was in Ubuntu trying to figure out a solution. So I appreciate very much all of those awesome suggestions and things that you leave in the comments, especially when you do it nicely, you know, cause I'm a human and I have feelings, feels. But Ubuntu's doing a really good job here. I'm very excited for the pipe wire installation as being a part of Ubuntu because it just takes that experience to a whole new level. So the last thing I wanna talk about is something that I mentioned at the very beginning of this video. It may not be a showstopper for you yet, but it's been a showstopper for me many times. I also do the Hardware Addicts podcast where I talk about all the latest and greatest hardware. I love getting a hold of new hardware and being able to install it and try it and those things. But Ubuntu is what they call stable release, and then you'll hear about rolling releases and kind of hybrid releases. So stable release Ubuntu takes between six months or so to get an update to the software that you're running. Now, in between those six months, you could have a lot of things happen. New kernel versions, new Mesa versions, new hardware dropping, and all of those things don't necessarily get built in in between. There are hardware enablement stacks in Ubuntu, but they're far and few between, too far and few between. And it ends up, if you start getting a brand new AMD motherboard that just came out, a processor or a new GPU, where you may have a situation in Ubuntu where you don't have drivers yet to support that. But again, if you stick with your hardware for a long time, it won't be an issue for you with all the stuff going on in the hardware world. I've had this hardware longer than probably any other hardware. So I don't suspect this is gonna be an issue for me, but it's something I hope Ubuntu team looks at and figures out in the future because even just the fact that you can manually, if you're advanced, go in and put a newer kernel version and get later with a PPA Mesa drivers, there's all kinds of other things that need to be upgraded potentially as well, where that won't work right, or it will cause crashes and other things. So that's, people use that as the solution, but it's not a full solution to the problem. It's something Ubuntu needs to address 
But again, if you're sticking with your hardware, no big deal. I want to give Ubuntu a lot of props for the default extensions that they installed to the point where I honestly didn't need to install any other extensions. I installed some just because, like for instance, the Simply Workspaces, which gives me an ability to click between my workspaces, one, two, and three here, virtual workspaces, which I really like, but I didn't have to have that. Whereas in other distros, when I install their GNOME experience, I end up having to install a bunch of different extensions to get everything that I need there. So I think Ubuntu's done a really good job with the default setup and things. And just the whole workspaces system just works so fantastic. For instance, if I do open QPW graph here and I want to move this to a different workspace, I can hit the super key and I could just drag this to a second workspace so that you're not able to see it there. And of course I have that simply workspace switcher so I could switch between my workspaces here or I can go back to this workspace here. So I just wanna say that the Ubuntu team has done an amazing job with this release and so has the GNOME team. Those two combined have really made for an intricate desktop experience that's very easy to navigate, simple to use. You can get your software that you need installed simply. And one of the great things about Ubuntu is just endless documentation and endless amount of people to help you. And plus it's a first class citizen. So when it comes to finding software out there for Linux, it's very likely if it's not in the software store that there's a dev file out there that you can install the software with. The community's fantastic. It's very welcoming to new people. And I think that deserves a lot of praise in itself. Again, you're beautiful. You're stable. I love you for all the things you do right. A couple quirks I'd love to see change both in Ubuntu and the GNOME side. But otherwise, what can I say? So let me know in the comments below what you think about Ubuntu. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains.